Everybody turns. Lane goes, my mom. Rory goes, my mom. And Todd goes, two moms. That can't be good. <laughs> Bless him. I love him. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm all right. I'm okay. I, it's a new month now, and I'm feeling I'm feeling the freshness of a new month, and just ready to move along. <laughs> yes. How are you doing? Definitely good. Um, I'm amused that we both just showed up with braids today. I think that's I know great and hilarious and completely unplanned. It's just a vibe, <laughs> March vibes, spring picnics. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. But yeah, I'm just feeling. I'm feeling the cozy. I've got my Guns and Roses hoodie on, and I'm just Guns and Roses and pigtails. That's that's the vibe. <laughs> Mine's pigtails in the headband and a plaid like blanket scarf. So I'm feeling picnic vibes, I guess. And you're feeling different, cozy. <laughs> <laughs> Something else. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we are the Belladonna Watch Club. Come get cozy with us while we dig into iconic shows and movies that one of us has never seen before. The rules are somebody needs to be coming with fresh eyes. I'm Lisa. And I'm Jenny. And we are watching Gilmore Girls still. We are on season one, episode 12, double date. Ah. Are we so halfway through the season already? Yes, there's, I, I was looking oh. last night, and there's only 21 episodes. So ah. we're just, we've are just we just passed the halfway point. Brilliant. Still so many twists and turns to come. I was looking at the synopsis, like the little Netflix descriptions of all the episodes, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's in this season. <laughs> like, I just, I'm so excited. So quick recap, we left off with a very sad Lorelai in the last episode after um, – a, like breakup, not breakup. It was just like, I need some space. Max needs space. There was a lot of drama. So Laurel, I was upset. This was like three or four episodes in a row that were very heavy and dramatic and angry. And mm -hmm. now we have this episode, Double Date, where everything is hilarious. We're back on a very playful, quirky, weird level. This is the episode right after Suki had asked out Jackson. So Suki and Jackson are going out on a date, but Jackson's cousin Rune is in town. <laughs> and Lorelai gets to go out with Rune. And <laughs> meanwhile, Rory, Lane, Dean, and Todd go out on a date. <laughs> Good old Todd. <laughs> so uh, what did you think? Oh, I had a blast with this episode. I actually, I texted you shortly after just being like, yep. <laughs> I'm in stitches. I cannot wait to talk about this episode. It, a, a noticeable lack of Emily, but that's totally fine because we need some, <laughs> we need some like yes. silly feelings and young and love and bonkersness. I really, really enjoyed this one. It was so nice to just, to just be in teenage land and dating land and funny butterfly feelings land again really really good i think all across the board we had some really great performances in this and it's it was hilarious yeah amazing yeah i really like this episode and i was so excited about rune <laughs> Because Rune is obviously a character that stands out for you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're just like, oh my god, he's so insane. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was so excited for you to, to see this episode and be introduced to Rune. <laughs> so let's let's dig into the episode. So after all the tension and the drama and everything that's been happening, this episode kicks off in the Gilmore's kitchen and there's this great music going on and they're in this rhythm Rory and Lorelai have this there's like like routine this rhythm down pat they've got the coffee that they're swapping up or like the pot and then they've got the pop tarts going in they're fixing each other's outfits to this like incredible soundtrack yeah it, yeah. it felt like like it's an unusual um uh cold open and there's, it's just music. I was thinking, oh, is this a musical episode? Like, because that was a thing yeah, for a so while. Like, what, is, what is this? And it's like this, yeah, choreographed, almost organized chaos. You know, it is not at all a like, nice and smooth and tidy morning routine. It is their morning routine of the, yeah. you know, dripping the coffee there. But it's it works for them. Organized chaos. And uh, 
yeah, it was like pop tarts out of the the toaster in a paper towel and then like into someone's mouth while the other person is like helping with their clip. Like it was just, but <laughs> you could tell they were in a groove. They yeah. were in each other's groove. They were in sync. It was yeah. so cool. I love the opening scene. And that's all it was. There's no talking. They just like get on with their day. And then it's the opening song. So then we have Lane and Rory in the living room and they've got all these CDs out. I guess there was some sale at a CD place. So Lane's all pumped about her new music. And they have this little exchange about Yoko Ono and how the Beatles would have broken up anyway. And I, just, mm -hmm. I enjoyed that bit very much. I think um, she was kind of ahead of the times, actually, with that sort of thinking. I think she because was. Because I feel, I, I feel like the, the Yoko blame has only just started to disappear right now. And yeah, thank you for spreading facts about Yoko Ono. Thanks very much. I appreciate that. Right? Uh, amazing. Thank you, Lane, for your public service 24 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Lane starts asking Rory about Todd. Well, first they put a CD in the CD player, and it is Claudine Langer. <laughs> I had never heard of her, uh, but she becomes relevant when Lorelai comes in and goes on this like roundabout tirade about how she has to go to business school and can't focus. But she doesn't say that. Rory has to be the one to be like, is the music too loud? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the first we've heard about Lorelai's classes in quite a while. It is, um, yeah. I, I wasn't sure if they were going to drop that or if it was going to be something that would come. And then this was making me wonder, like, was she keeping up with these studies when she was dating Max? Because she was seeing him every day, just about every day. We'll find out she's struggling with these studies of just keeping her focused. <laughs> so, don't blame her. Yes. I mean, she must have still been going because she's obviously able to take the finals and the tests and all of that. So I think if she hadn't been going, they wouldn't really allow her to graduate unless it's just papers and stuff like maybe the classwork is optional I don't know <laughs> I don't know but so she asks about Claudine Langer and she's like oh the one that shot the skier and I looked it up because I was like what does that mean and there was mm -hmm. this singer who was married to Andy Williams up until like the mid early 70s and then she started dating this Olympian skier and she ended up accidentally shooting him in what? the stomach on the verge of a breakup, allegedly. So that was very juicy and a fun little side quest that I went on last night <laughs> reading about her. <laughs> I didn't love about the article that I read. It was like the skier, I forget his name. Sorry. The victims are obviously the most important people in these stories. And I apologize about that. <laughs> so the skier was like an all-American idol. Like everybody loved him. He was like the golden boy. And Claudine Langer was a divorcee. Like real oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. It was just so insane. Uh, the sexism. Ridiculous. Yeah. Misogyny. Oh, yeah. Anyway, moving right along from that. Lorelai goes back in trying to study and Lane reapproaches Rory about going on this date with Todd, this double date with Todd. Dean's best friend, by the way, if anybody doesn't remember who Todd is. I don't know if they specify best friend, but it's the only one that we've mentioned of Dean yeah. the whole time. Yeah, we we last heard of him in Kiss and Tell. I think that was the mm -hmm. only time we heard about him, and I believe she does refer to him as Dean's best friend. But otherwise, okay. we don't know anything about him. Rory doesn't even know him. That's it. So Rory's like, I don't know if this is such a good idea because like, I don't know him and like, this is weird is this not weird and lane's like no 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 it's this different it's gonna be amazing he's the one for me she actually says yes he's the one for me <laughs> she uses the word soulmate which ah. is one of my words that i i have a tendency to use and oh i, fe I felt her in this moment when she <laughs> says soulmate but she has far more conviction and like storming forward kind of yeah gumption than I do. So <laughs> she lost me there. <laughs> so Rory doesn't really want to. And as we're discussing this, again, Lorelai pops in and starts talking about how she probably just doesn't need to go to business school and she doesn't need to open her own inn and she doesn't want to be one of the people who's not happy with what they have. And then it just goes from there to this. <laughs> people don't have legs or arms. I have legs and arms. <laughs> what more could I possibly want than legs and arms? I mean, I could take all the classes in the world. That's still not going to give me what I already have. 
legs and arms. Yes. Am I sounding completely crazy? Yes, you are. <sighs> Walmart is boring. Study. <laughs> <laughs> I am Lorelai in this moment. <laughs> Walmart is boring. Relatable. That's so, so relatable. relatable. You know you need to be like in study mode and just everything. You just uh, just step out of the room. Talk to someone else. Yeah. Have a conversation about something else. Oh, man. Like, oh, but the dishes need to be done. And oh, I was supposed to do this four months ago and it's been sitting on my desk and now is the time. <laughs> yeah. I should be studying, yeah. but now is the time. <laughs> Rory does agree to the date. Would you have agreed to the date to make it happen? Sure. I think yeah, I would. I just to not. be like, you know what? It doesn't have to be fancy double date. It can just be, yeah, it's going to be four of us hanging out. And if you like him, you like him. If you don't, you don't. If he likes you, uh, whatever. We're all going anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I would have. Exactly. I would have said yes too. If nothing else, to not be the one to like possibly be hampering true love. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, of course. I'm yeah. I mean, I, way of that. I think I understand her being kind of uncomfortable with like bringing it to Dean because hmm. obviously Dean is the one who knows him and she's just kind of like, I, well, he's just a, a stranger. So I, I, I might be a little hesitant to actually like bring it forth to Dean, but uh, uh, why not? So we move on to the inn where there's a scene at the beginning, which I adore, where Lorelai is studying and Michelle comes in and he's like, I hate to interrupt you on like your future job, but your current job actually needs you right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they're overbooked at the end. She's like, how, how did that happen? And she handles it with such flair and decisiveness. She's like, put them in this room and do this and give them a you know, free dinner to say thing. Like, sorry for the inconvenience. She just, mm -hmm. it was amazing. Mm -hmm. I love when we get to see her use her, like her natural problem solving skills. If it's, if it's for work, then, you know, there's no hesitation. She can do it straight away. So it, it's nice to actually see her on top of things once again. She's been, she's had a, a couple rough, difficult episodes. <laughs> Yes, she has. So Lorelai studying. And then after this exchange, she goes into the kitchen and in comes Jackson. So Jackson and Suki have, you know, their let's go out for dinner moment. And then I guess it's been a while because this is what's going on here. Great. Just put them down there. Right. Oh, yes. How's that? That's great. That's just perfect. I really like them there. Yeah, they, they do look good there, don't they? Yes, they do. Uh, and that's so relatable. The moment where you're like, I don't know what to talk. To. I don't know how to talk to this person. I don't know what to say. It's like, I, I want to talk to them. And then the words are bad. The words, they don't, mm -hmm. they don't word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it was weeks ago that, that she asked him out on this like potential hypothetical future date, but they didn't make any plans. <laughs> Foolish, but uh, Foolish. relatable. <laughs> Very relatable. Mm -hmm. And... And Lorelai's like, okay, so who walked in on who naked? Because it's so, it's one of those things where it's like something horribly awkward has happened. Like somebody needs to make the next move for the date. And Jackson's not doing it. Suki doesn't want to do it because she wants to be the girl. <laughs> and Lorelai's like, you are being the girl. That's why we're having this very confusing conversation. <laughs> That's why this mm -hmm. is happening. This is Suki and Lorelai sharing that kind of vision of like the old Hollywood kind of romancy thing. Lorelai can move past that in real life. She might love the romance of it, but you know, she can do the asking out and she can do the being forthcoming. Uh, but Suki don't think she wants to do that she wants the the romance and the sweet and the the movie the movie asking out that kind of thing i like actually looking at um comparing suki's weirdness and discomfort right now with lane who is so forthcoming and like <laughs> i've decided it's him todd i don't know clearly she doesn't know much about him as we find out a little later but she just goes for it she's not gonna ask yeah. him herself but she wants it to happen and she is so sure of it and then there's Suki here being like, hit Nick at the oh no. <laughs> the person I like who said yes to me. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. I think that's possibly like teenage, teenage obliviousness. Like Lane is still undamaged, <laughs> whereas Suki yeah. has had years of possibly getting hurt and turned down to 
grapple with. <laughs> mm-hmm. Could be. Could and, be. you know, he's he's her produce guy. Can't, you know, we'll never get another produce guy. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> there is more risk for Suki in this situation than there is for Lane. Yeah. In terms of the actual relationship going south. So <laughs> Lorelai convinces Suki to call Jackson and she leaves, starts leaving him this like ridiculous voicemail. And she's there like twirling her hair with maybe that's why we did braids today because of Suki's Sub- like <laughs> subconscious <laughs> braids. Yeah. yeah. Hair action. <laughs> twirling her hair with her spoon and like, okay, Jackson. And it just keeps going and going and going. And then she starts, I forget actually what she ends up saying where Lorelai's like, okay, hang up the phone now. <laughs> that's done. We're done. But I'm it was sure. veering into, okay, that's enough. Like, eh, eh, eh. yeah, it was cute and it was a mess until she gets into planning mode because Lorelai is like, okay, now start planning for when he calls you back, have some options ready. And she's like, okay, good, a plan. And that's what she seems to settle down a little bit until yeah. she starts writing with her spoon and then <laughs> like, okay, she's not <laughs> fully there. Not all the way there. <laughs> So then we have Rory surprising Dean outside the school, and all he wants to do is kiss. And she's trying to talk to him. And I think this is very (laughs) annoying. (laughs) I agree. (laughs) I like I remember being a teenager and just wanting to kiss all the time when I had a boyfriend. But like she's trying to talk to you, man. She is sort of she's definitely in still enjoying herself though. I mean, she's just smiling all the way through it. And you can tell this isn't like a huge, huge, heavy thing on her mind. She does. She'd probably much rather be kissing too, but she, she, she manages to rein him in <laughs> just for a moment, <laughs> just to get her question out. But um, actually, I so this scene opens. We're focusing in on the book she's reading, which is Sylvia Plath, ah, <laughs> like the wonderful. assorted works of Sylvia Plath. And like I was waiting for us to see Sylvia Plath in uh, in Rory's hands at some point. And then zooms out. And yeah, Dean comes along to see her. And I just love that he goes, is there anything about me in there? And like, oh, um, no. <laughs> do, you, do you really want to be in a book of Sylvia Plath's? Like, no, no, thank God there's nothing about you in here. And then it was in this scene that I noticed they both have um, bum chins, little dented chins. Yeah, Rory's and- chin is so prominent in this, in yeah. this scene. It's so cute. They both, they both have them. So my dented chin and I felt very seen during this. <laughs> <laughs> so Rory does start to ask Dean and Dean is uncomfortable because he knows Lane and he knows Todd. So he's the mm-hmm. only one that can make any type of objective conclusions or draw any conclusions about how this date's going to go. And he's like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't know. And he's not necessarily thinking that it's because of Lane. As we learn later, it's definitely because of Todd. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But Rory doesn't know that and immediately jumps to her defense. And I love this scene. I love her for this. I think Todd would like Lane? I'm not sure. Lane is great. Yeah, I know. She's my best friend. Yeah, I, I know that. Todd should be so lucky to get a girl like her. <laughs> I didn't mean I mean, to... I can't believe that you don't think that she's good enough or, I don't no, know, pretty I enough. I didn't say anything about her not being pretty but enough. But let did. me finish. I just don't know if, if he'll like her because I don't know what kind of girl he does like. Well. But if you want to do this, then I'll talk to him. You will? Yeah. And you'll mention Sunday? I'll mention Sunday. Like, you you stand up for your girl. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't think she needed to, though. Um... Because I hate, I really wish they wouldn't do the talking over each other thing. I hate, hate, hate when they do that. Because why would she have any reason to think that he'd say Lane isn't good enough? Like, he's never made any kind of intimation of that at all. He thinks, like, I don't know, we don't know what he thinks of her, but he's not said anything. So just let him get it out. Let him explain why instead of jumping, jumping over him. But whatever i think i, I would have immediately been a little like wait what do you mean like what do you mean no why not like i would have yeah. been defensive so just and suspicious right away <laughs> sure but then just ask instead of saying i can't believe you think she's not pretty enough like no one said that <laughs> and i also kind of don't like that rory chooses to sort of make out like it was her idea because like she's clearly already a little bit uncomfortable with asking about it anyway like, she's it's not her idea I kind of, I don't know, I kind of wish she had said, like, Lane is kind of into your friend Todd 
maybe we should give them a try together. But instead, she's like, I think this would be a great idea for us all to do this and go out on Sunday. Like, it's not your idea. You don't have to take shoulder the responsibility for that. But maybe that's maybe that's a Lane and Rory thing. I don't know. Maybe yeah. Lane didn't want Rory to make it a big deal because she didn't want Todd to think that she was like super in love with him. Like she, maybe she wanted her to like downplay it and kind of shoulder some of that. Cool. Yeah. Good point. Fair. Yeah. Cause I could see Lane being like, don't, don't tell, don't tell Dean that it was because I'm like in love with his friend. <laughs> so they agree. They agree. They're going to go out on Sunday sometime after church. <laughs> Although she said, do not mention church. Right. Oh, right. And meanwhile, we're back at the end of Lorelai. She's still studying. And we get this charming moment from Michelle. I adore Michelle. What do you think of Michelle? <laughs> he feels very much like he belongs somewhere else completely. But I love that he's still in this. Like, I don't get the feeling he's ready to just, like, leave. And he doesn't give people a hard time. He's still, like, he's he's doing his job. Um, and I feel like he just sort of exists in his own space. And other people are sometimes just sort of allowed in in his conversation and into his into his brain but um no i love it i, I think he's just i think he's on top of things and uh and he's just sort of he's got the con he's got the control Un unfettered <laughs> the impression I like that him. i get from michelle is that he like doesn't even live in stars hollow <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right <laughs> like yeah he's around but he's not part of the town. But then if he's not living in Stars Hollow, where is he from? <laughs> like, what is he doing here? And it works. But okay, yeah, he's totally like not invested in anything that's going on there. He's not a townie. No. But then where does oh, he no. live? I love it. So we get this. Lorelai and Michelle. Give up. That's the spirit. I can't remember any of this crap. Well, not everyone is cut out to be their own boss. Maybe you are more of a worker bee, a follower, a, a ticket ripper, or the man at the concert with the orange glow stick directing you where to park. You're baiting me, aren't you? No. I seriously have no faith in your attitude. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that is so incredible. I can yeah. imagine saying that to somebody. Oh, I would love to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Could never. No, he speaks with ease, I, and it's it's nice to see him not being tormented by anything for once. In other episodes, it feels like there's always something going on, and he's just so frustrated with things. But now he's just he's having a he's having a laugh, and it's great. So in comes Suki saying Jackson called, and they were gonna go on a date on Sunday, but his cousin is in town, and Lorelai's like, okay, so you could see him another time. So he goes, that would have been a great idea had I thought of it at the time. And we have all been there where, like, the most <laughs> obvious answer is not coming to you. <laughs> and you're just like, panic, panic. I still want to see him. What do I do? Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. So Suki agrees to ask Lorelai to go on a double date with Jackson's cousin Rune. And they're all going to go to this fancy, fancy French restaurant. And Lorelai's like, but, but why? I don't want to do this. Blind dates are awful. And why didn't you just say no? And she's like, ooh, didn't, didn't think. I already that. said yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Michelle is there listening with the most amused, ridiculous look on his face. And she's just like, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> We've, uh, this is all going down on Sunday. So right? like what a weird day for a that, date. I like that choice to just have it all happen on the same day, not like sometime later on. Well, it's Suki's only day off. That's right. Oh, that's right. Oh god. That sucks. Been there. <laughs> so now everybody's getting ready for their respective dates. We've got Suki and Lorelai getting ready upstairs. We've got Lane and Rory getting ready downstairs. Different vibes, completely different vibes. Lena's is confident. She's got, she's like, what, the rhinestones are this? Like, she picks the rhinestones. She's having a blast. And they're so excited to go on their dates. And then Suki is losing her ever-loving mind. She's freaking out. And not just, like, jitters, not excited. She's going, like, full chaos. <laughs> she's talking herself out of it. And this scene in particular... Many of the scenes in this episode, but this one in particular, I could put me and you in their places. Suki yeah. oh, is definitely me, and is I have been that 
so many times. And the way that Lorelai just manages to to approach it and handle it with common sense, <laughs> but then also like just enough humor of ridiculousness to sort of help Suki maintain her common sense or t- attempt to regain some common sense. That is what you do. And you are superb at that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <That's it. laughs> the preparations are going on in different rooms and on different levels of the house, but they're still communicating with each other. And Lorelai calls out, uh, hey, the Viva Glam! <laughs> Viva Glam lipstick. Remember yep. those days of Viva I Glam, do. Mac, Viva Glam lipstick? So as part of Suki's freak out, she's like, Jackson, Jackson is my my produce guy. Like, what am I like? What am I gonna do? And she's like, Oh my god, he's the only person who ever grows produce, and you're never gonna get produce again. Like, that's the level of like humor that she's and common sense that she's bringing into mm-hmm. it. And mm-hmm. then she's like, We'll never get produce again, and the vegetarians will die. <laughs> <laughs> they do continue it, Eve. Like, just the way beyond ridiculous. So he goes so far as to be like, oh my gosh, I'm technically his employer. Technically? I'm his employer. Suki. I am. I buy his wares. His livelihood depends on me. Suki. <gasps> I'm a sexual harasser. Well, then you need some false eyelashes. This isn't funny. <laughs> I am now desperate, lonely, and a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> that is you. <laughs> Well, I mean, now everything's different. You're a sexual harasser. So this is obviously what's going on right now. (laughs) And we realized that Lorelai doesn't actually know what the plans are that Rory and Lane have. She Mm. knows that they're getting ready to go out. She is totally Mm -hmm. unaware of what's actually going down. We have Lane and Rory trying to decide what to tell Lorelai, how much to tell Lorelai, because Lane asks, like, will she tell my mom? And Rory is like, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> there's a mom code, and my mm-hmm. mom will not lie to another mom. There's no way. So Lane is like, okay, so we just say we're going to the movies with Dean, and his friend happens to be there. And it'd be rude not to ask him to sit with us. So that's just what we're going to tell him, that we're going to the movies with Dean. That is an omission of information that Rory is just <laughs> comfortable enough with to get away yeah. with, to mm-hmm. say, all right, let's do that, so that... Lorelai doesn't have to lie to Mrs. Kim about having known where they were going or what they were doing. Did you notice that Lane puts on two coats? She's got like the rhinestone jacket and then puts on <laughs> another jacket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why? It's, just a, it's a bit excessive. I, I like that they, <laughs> I like the choice to have them sharing clothes and that like part of this whole disguise, disguise thing and, and the secret night out involves like wearing Rory's clothes and disguising that. And and we get so much more of a buildup of mystery of like, who is Todd? Because we don't know we anything no about idea. him. And she's so, <laughs> she's so, Lane so foolishly holds up uh, two choices of, of jacket or thing to wear. Rhinestones? Do you think Todd would like rhinestones? And Rory, I like her tone here, goes, I don't know Todd. And again, <laughs> reminds us, nobody knows him. And so now I'm very curious about Todd. Like, what are we about to encounter? I, yep. We need, we need to find out. Just about her wearing Rory's clothes, it's not so much the, like, disguise. It's just that Lane's mom won't let her wear anything cute. Like, she always oh, has to wear, like, yeah. blouses and is super conservative and whatever, right? And so it happens a lot. <laughs> she wears Rory's clothes a lot. <laughs> Aww, <laughs> because she, good. she just can't have the clothes that she wants at home. And I think she like stashes clothes at Rory's house. Like there's like really <laughs> this is a, a thing that she has to do to be herself. Aww. Which is sad. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, if this was like a real person in situation, it's heartbreaking. Absolutely. Because as like we know, she's such a good kid. Mm-hmm. And like the fact that she has to hide so much of herself and that she's still like amazing hurts my mama heart. So they go and Suki comes down. Her hair is a lot. Yeah, can it we is talk about lot. this, please? It is like layers of like small, bumpy, not even like a curly bun moment, but like how would you describe that? Like a raspberry on the back of Something her head? like that. Yeah, it's Awful. it's prom hair. It's bad. Um, it's bad prom hair. It's like early 90s beauty pageant prom hair yeah it's what too a much weird it's, choice <laughs> yeah it's way too much for a date even a date uh-huh. at a fancy french restaurant 
Mm -hmm. And like mm -hmm. Jackson sees you every day. Like it's so weird to do this like huge transformation. Like to be fair, it wasn't a huge transformation, but the hair was yeah. a lot. She and does cute she things with her hair all the time. She does pretty. like twists. She does twists yeah. and cute clips and things. Like I, I don't know, but I guess that that's another thing of like the the disguise, the date disguise, yeah. or the you performance know, um, of dating. The performance. That's it. Yeah, the performance. Yeah, absolutely. She comes down. She looks sweet and lovely, except the hair is way too much. That's all I have to say about that. Doorbell rings. Knock on the door, and it's Jackson and Rune. <laughs> Jackson is like immediately like, wow, Suki, you look amazing. Like he looks so smitten. It's so cute. Then Lorelai tries to introduce herself to Rune and she like tries to shake his hand and he does not take it and asks instead to talk to Jackson outside. Like what is happening here? Everybody's left and the door is wide open. They're literally six feet away. <laughs> and this conversation happens. That's Lorelai? Yes. Did you see how tall she is? No, I haven't noticed, actually. How could you not notice? She's like a basketball player. Room, she's a very nice lady. No, I cannot go out with anyone that tall. I mean, Claude, I can't believe you set me up with that. What, was the bearded lady busy tonight or something? It's just one night, a little dinner. She can't... <gasps> the, what the did you think? Of, <laughs> I j the level of jerk? Like, oh. I, in my notes, you won't be able to see here, but I wrote... Wow, what an asshole. He hasn't even said hello to her. Like, you can... Maybe he has these opinions about her anyway. Okay, fine. But you don't bloody well say it. You don't... <laughs> oh, my God! <gasps> oh, my oh, God. I know. It's insane. Jackson's like, shh, she's gonna hear you. And she's like, she's well, of course you. she will with those big ears. Like, <laughs> she, what? It's, what is happening right now? Like, Lorelai <laughs> is stunning. Not yeah. like gargantuan and <laughs> no, <laughs> no, and Lorelai is such a champ because I would have a stormed out onto my porch, been like, get off my property, go away, and I've mm -hmm. been like, Suki Jackson, go on your date. I'm not going, yeah, like, oh, absolutely. Or if you want to stay here, Jackson, with Suki, the three of us can like order a pizza because mm -hmm. that little man is coming nowhere near me. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. She is such a champ going out with her her bestie and mm -hmm. this creature. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That is it. Rune the creature. Ugh. Rune the creature. Props to the actor though for for making him believable somehow. Cause like he's ridiculous. I don't think I've ever met a person who is that rude, but but the actor does a really good job with this performance of just making him to be such a jerk. <laughs> yes yes he does and Hard. he looks like you know it's because he's short and unattractive that mm. he like lashes out and he's rude and you know like you know that it's that type of man mm. but he looks like revolted he looks so yeah! genuinely off put by Lorelai and everybody's just like I'm sorry Lorelai is the problem like what is <laughs> happening right now <laughs> This is like I don't what? know. I wonder what he was expecting. Like, was he expecting her to be like nasty rat woman, or like, what? What were you expecting to find? Are you stunned that she's actually pretty and you can't admit it? Or like, I don't get it. I don't understand. Maybe he knows that she wouldn't actually ever want to go out with him, and so he's just like his defenses. Like he's he's putting on the offense to be like, well, no, she's awful. Could be because I'm going to be rejected by this woman so we're just not even gonna let that happen we are being so generous to such a disgusting character <laughs> <laughs> i'm not just trying to psychoanalyze it. It. i'm not no no <laughs> it's awful but it, it's so funny <laughs> i'm mm. just like you mm -hmm. have to like laugh i was laughing out loud and steve was like on the floor doing something i don't know but he was just like in the corner like howling oh it was so good <laughs> So they go to this really fancy restaurant and it's so uncomfortable. It's so stuffy and it's like very low music and there's not a lot of noise and it's low lighting. And like, I don't know if you've ever been to a restaurant like that. Other I than haven't. maybe with me that time we went out for dinner really late at night after that walking tour. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
The weirdest, oh God, the weirdest set of circumstances. We were in a very small town and it was middle of the week and it was past eight o'clock. So everything was closed except this like hotel restaurant. And anyway, it was, we were not in our typical surroundings. (laughs) It was very weird. (laughs) Or to our typical senses. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. Anyway. (laughs) So they are at this restaurant and it's so uncomfortable. And the first thing we have is Rune asking Lorelai what size shoes she wears. Oh my God. And she's like, nine? And he's like, wow, nine. Wow, that's big. <laughs> <laughs> like, no decorum, no tact in any way at all. And they're trying to make conversation. And Suki's doing that, that, like, nervous chatter about, like, the Mm -hmm. muscles. Like, oh, I wonder if they're fresh. Because if they're not fresh, sometimes they're, like, sitting in their own excrement. And Lorelai's like, stop. We're not talking about excrement. We're not talking about (laughs) food sitting in excrement on this date. That's not happening. And then Jackson sort of does his version of that, talking about, I wonder where they get their carrots. The carrot crop has been very mealy this year. (laughs) And that made me think of Steve because he's doing this whole like homestead and gardening moment. And so he's oh. very, he would say something like that for <laughs> sure. <laughs> so they're talking about the menu. The waiter comes and Suki goes, I'd like to ask about the mussels. Are they fresh? Yes, they are. And where exactly are your carrots from? Well, is there anything on this menu that isn't French? They're at a French restaurant. <laughs> like he's so impossible. And then Lorelai's just like, Martini, keep him coming. Lorelai's just like trying her best to to make conversation. And so she's like, Rune, what is that Rune? And trying to get to the origin of his name. And he's just not getting it. Like it was yeah. so painful. Have you ever been in a conversation like that where they're just not getting like what you're trying to <laughs> Oh, say? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think, um, oh, gosh, Lorelai does. She's so exceptional in this scene because not only is she on this horrible date and she's not even there for her own benefit. She's there for her friend. Is this the first time I think that we've seen her around a man who doesn't show her respect or doesn't fancy her immediately? She's already in a bad headspace as well because she's just had this horrible thing fall to pieces with Mr. Medina. And like this poor woman, she is just not in a space to be told that she's ugly and tall and big ears and like, come on. But she's not going to cause a scene. She is there for her friend. And like, wow, wow. Thinking of this and then thinking of of the scene from the last episode where she and Suki are having that argument in the kitchen um, about like, I know your tendencies in, in relationships and your patterns and blah, 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 blah. This is showing her being a really, really good friend. And that when it comes down to it, when it's time to, you know, to be supportive and help your friend, you will go through garbage for them Everything. because it's not about you. It's about, it's about them. And she's also right. with asking, asking Rune a, about himself. That's a tactic, isn't it? It's like, okay. He, the, our, our conversation isn't working, so let's move the conversation to him. Ask him about him. Get him, just to get him talking. Yeah, about, about something. something other than my physical features. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's ju- let's humor him and let him just talk about himself for a bit. People love to talk about themselves, right? <laughs> but that is also a really risky thing, because he could be like, oh, my girlfriend left me, and then, like, my mom is me. Oh, and, easily. Like, just- awful right (laughs) so that's also a risk like sometimes you want to stay neutral when the person is obviously going through some stuff even if it's his whole personality is going through stuff (laughs) so Lorelai's trying to like keep this date on track but Suki just keeps talking to Lorelai and she's telling all of these stories and having Lorelai there isn't the buffer that she wanted it to be it's a distraction and Lorelai keeps trying to bring it back by being like, hey, Jackson, did you know that Suki used to, like, has been baking and trying different things for a really long time? And then Suki still would turn to Lorelai and talk to her. And so at some point, Lorelai's like, Suki, come with me. You're not here on a date with me. No matter how many beers you give me, I'm not the one going home with you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
a great line. Again, Suki's like, I know. And this part's so relatable because she's like, my hair is too tight. This restaurant's too stuffy. This dress is all wrong. And like, we're all, we've all been there where it's just like everything feels a little bit wrong and I can't mm-hmm. focus and I can't do this because it's like my my shirt is itchy and it's too hot in here and like I'm a little bit There's hungry. Too much pressure. There's too much yeah. pressure. She does not do well under pressure unless she's in the kitchen. <laughs> exactly. And Rune is there <laughs> cutting the heads off the butter swans just like he's so <laughs> insane chaotic chaotic man <laughs> and so actually when she pulls her away from the table she goes we're gonna go powder our noses and Rin goes gonna need a lot of powder like <laughs> <laughs> every opportunity for a jab they do it oh man oh He's my god forced. and so after this little sidebar that they have they decide they're just going to luke's they're like let's go somewhere safe somewhere easy somewhere casual let's yeah, do it i cheered I literally yes. cheered from my couch. Like, yes, come on, let's get back to normal. Ugh. And it's so sweet that Lorelai is still so invested in the date. Oh, absolutely. like it could just be like this has been a wash. Let's all go home. Like, but mm-hmm. she still really wants the date to happen for Suki. She's like, this is such a good thing for her and for Jackson, and I want them to have a fighting chance at a good mm-hmm. first date. And I absolutely applaud her for that. Like, it could have just ended. Meanwhile, we've got our kiddos on their date. So they're waiting in line for the movie, and we've got Rory and Dean up ahead. We've got Lane and Todd at the back, but we still don't see Todd yet. Rory keeps looking back, and Dean is like, relax, they're okay. And so they're they're chatting. And finally, finally, we get to meet Todd. And Lane is having this incredible one-sided conversation about (laughs) music so she's talking about beck and how people don't get that he's like being a parody of like a rock star (laughs) nobody understands and they're buying into it and uh she let me down here i was like gosh no she's one of those girls the ones that are like these girls don't get it. They just don't get it. They don't under- understand him. And I was like, no. <laughs> but we've all been that at some point in time. Like, I'm different to the other girls. I actually understand this. Like, oh, girl. Todd is a brick wall. He mm-hmm. is, he looks not really annoyed, like no. a little bit annoyed, almost annoyed, but also not interested and not comfortable and not anything he's just like void (laughs) yeah 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 and like it's a very weird introduction to this character um because he's had such a build-up and then we're like oh there's nothing there other than just (laughs) what oh uh okay (laughs) okay bless lane for trying so she's already mentioned these these really cool musical groups beck the Foo Fighters, the Velvet Underground, and Nico, and like a girl, I would do the same. Just throw like all of my musical interests and be like, see which one sticks. And she tries even further. She notices on his T-shirt, Fugazi, bonkers punk band. Yeah, okay, there's an in. No, it's uh, he doesn't actually know the band. It's his sister's T-shirt. Like <laughs> he didn't even know it was a band shirt. He goes, oh, cool picture. Cool picture. <laughs> Oh my god. Such like a stoner surfer skater, like probably Mm -hmm. early 2000, like a BMX boy, because they like he and Dean (laughs) work on their bikes. Like (laughs) that's it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Lane asks him, like, what do you want to major in? And he goes, Oh, gym. Like, if I take gym, I only have to take four classes in my senior year. (laughs) (laughs) Clever guy. Yeah. Rory's like. Dean, what? Jim? Yeah. Like, who is this guy? And Dean's like, we work on our bikes you. together. He has the good tools. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I loved um, Dean's fingers. That We just see his fingers turn Rory's face away. Because yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's basically like, Rory, let them deal with it. We're on this date together. Okay, this is our date. Let them do their thing. We're going to quit eavesdropping. And he, you just see his fingers turn her face back. Very yeah. cute. 
And so we're like, okay, this this is the Todd. This is mm-hmm. this is it. And so obviously she's never spoken to him before. She's only seen him, been like, wow, he's cute. And that's all I know. <laughs> been <laughs> there. there is- oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, okay, I need to do a there. little tangent thing here. I need to do a little tangent that um I wish that I had the gumption that Lane has to just see it through to just if you really fancy this guy you find a way to be on a date with him to make it it happen me i was not that i would be a long distance admirer not just admirer but like well into it just i don't know i don't know if i actually would use the word soulmates in those days but maybe um mega crush mega all-consuming crush but i would not talk to them Mm, and he wouldn't have (laughs) Oh, no, not a chance. No, no. I was just comfortable in the just the crush phase. But I wish that I had her gumption because then I could have saved myself years, years of crushing on just a dolt, you know, just a total nothingness. I mean, but the thing is, like, you wouldn't have never actually known if there was more because you wouldn't ever get to know them. That's like, it. That, yeah, that's well. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is like yeah, if if exactly. I had her gumption, then I could have avoided just found out <laughs> earlier, and then yeah, and then avoided all the rest. Um, so <laughs> so I, I do like that they ha- that they decided to make Todd just this like absolutely not a match for her at all, and they present him as if there's just nothing going on at all. But the next scene, oh my I god, this it. is I when he just it. comes to life. Oh, this. <laughs> Boy, the sweet little baby boy. <laughs> so she, we're in the movie. <laughs> and Lane, it's like, okay, oh, good. New topic of conversation. What movies do you like? And this is where she gets him. And he goes, oh, Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> with the biggest smile on like, his face. The one with the dog. <laughs> He's like, yeah, this like little puppy runs with this huge cabbage in his mouth, and it's so funny. I spit up my Dr. <laughs> Pepper through my nose. Like he's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I, lo- I I wrote in Yay Todd. Yay Todd. His his enthusiasm is great. So I just yeah. I love that that's there. He's so just, you know. Um, you get him into his thing, and and he's fantastic. Um, clearly they're not a match. They are so not a match, but I like him. I'm glad they didn't just make him some awful person. He's just not the right guy for her. <laughs> yeah, he's he's yeah, very juvenile, very immature, very you know, and and that's not for late. Like he's just not an academic. You know, it's no. it's he just he's he's a from a he's cut from a different cloth <laughs> yeah. let's say he's cut yeah. from flannel she's cut from silk or something i don't know <laughs> i don't know what are t-shirts made of he's jersey like yeah. <laughs> yeah and so a grown-up group ends up at luke's the first thing rune says when they walk in is ew <laughs> <laughs> They open the door and Rune is just like, ew. <laughs> so good. And so the three of them sit down while Lorelai goes up to the counter to like get some relief from this man. <laughs> she is like, mm-hmm. absolutely not. I'm going to talk to Luke. She asks for some cheeseburgers and an anvil. He's like, yes. What's the anvil <laughs> for? Rune. What's a rune? Please not that question again. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes to tell Luke that... <laughs> Rune is displeased with the match. And Luke is just like, what? Like, how does he figure? And she's like, well, it's because I'm too tall. And he's like, don't, doesn't he understand that you can reach the things on the top shelf? She's like, that's what I'm saying. That's what I bring to a relationship. (laughs) (laughs) It's so nice to, 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 we finally get a conversation that works well. The ease the ease and the flow of conversation between them and they're on the same page and we get it we get because we haven't had that like at any point during this episode so (laughs) at last it's just i just ah you can breathe again and we're at we're comfortable at luke's thank god 
Yes. And he pours her this cup of coffee. And I just love this bit because it seems the response surprised me. So this is this is what I grabbed. Ooh, that is an exceptionally good batch of coffee. Yeah. Hello. I added a little nutmeg. Really? Yes. That's very Richard Simmons of you. <laughs> well, what can I say? Chicks dig a man with a feminine side. Oh. Very Richard Simmons is <laughs> because he's gay. <laughs> I I wrote in more like Richard Cinnamons. Ah! <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so oh. sorry. <laughs> well, that's been the Bella Donna Watch Club. We will not be bothering you again. <laughs> Richard Simmons. I don't associate Richard Simmons to, I guess, because it's, it's got flair. Like, sure. I, just, I don't know. I just I was not expecting a like aerobics work, sweat into the oldies workout tape reference. <laughs> it like to the coffee and the nutmeg. And so I was like, what does she mean? Um, if anyone really wants to know, um, when I was a child, my friends would come over and we would just for fun do sweat into the oldies tapes. I was like 11. <laughs> And it was amazing. <laughs> I wish I'd been there. We were doing oh Tybo in so Laura's basement. Remember Tybo? <laughs> Billy Blanks. Yeah. Oh, no. I could do some of that these days. Anyway. Yeah. We had a bunch of those sweat into the oldies tapes. Oh, yeah. And they were fantastic. <laughs> the VHS. <laughs> All right. So Lorelai pretty much decides that she's staying at the counter. <laughs> she's like, I'm not going back. This has been awful. Let's let them breathe over there for a minute. And then Rune stands up and he's like, I'm out of here. This sucks. Like, you drive me to this French restaurant. You put me on this date with this horrible woman. I'm not doing this anymore. I want to go bowling, Jackson. Let's go. And Jackson kind of doesn't really know what he wants to do. He looks dejected. There's no one saying anything. And he starts mm -hmm. to stand up. And Suki goes, no, Jackson, stay. Like, we haven't even started our date. And Jackson is finally getting the confirmation that he needed that, like, Suki really wants to be doing this, which is crazy to me because Suki is the one that asked him out. Jackson needs to be the one also, like, demonstrating that he wants to actively be on the date. Mm -hmm. However, he had looked really disappointed every time Suki started to talk to Lorelai. Like, there was that, like, Jackson wanting her attention. And yeah. so Jackson finally gets the gumption to be like, Rune, go away. Get out of here. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. No way. You're a grown-up. You can amuse yourself on a Sunday night. Like, wh <laughs> why is this so difficult? I really like and appreciate seeing personalities like Jackson and Suki in this kind of romantic setting because that feels so much more relatable to myself. I see myself there and needing that, ki that regular kind of confirmation validation reassurance that yes i want you here yes i want to be out on a date with you i yes it was really really nice to see here so, this is me <laughs> it can work for them it can work for me <laughs> yeah it did feel very cozy and sweet and yeah it was it's nice <laughs> mm. it's like it's a different sort of flavor to to seeing yeah, exactly. lorelei's uh lorelei's confidence in relationships um that's so. it it's nice yeah because both of them are a bit sheepish both of them don't necessarily have the confidence to just come out there and say what they're thinking and mm. they're both feeling kind of giddy and flirty but shy it, it's awesome and so rune leaves lorelei's like i am fully staying at the counter now and luke has this line where he says First, I have to watch a man walk out on you, and now I need to watch you eat alone. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I loved that because he says it so casually, but he says it in a way that is still very, like, I, I like, we uh, loved it. He was especially pointed with his sort of, uh, it, it, it's not specifically flirtation. Instead, like, it, it's not coming out like a teasing sort of thing. It's coming out like, uh, these are his, his feelings and his thoughts coming straight mm -hmm. out. I think he's even more clear now with his position and his feelings as in it's, it's even clearer to us it's clearer to Lorelai too <laughs> you can see the look on her face yes. of like oh oh wow okay <laughs> mm. yeah Where and so they start playing cards mm -hmm. and Lorelai does this thing 
<laughs> where she just keeps asking for more cards. I'm pretty sure they're playing poker. I don't know. You have to like give cards back and then ask for different cards. And Luke is like, you can't do that. She's like, I have vowed to discard everything negative in my life, starting with Rune and now these cards. <laughs> like, give me the cards. And he's just like, fine, whatever. Take the cards. I don't care. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's again, he is loving every moment of this. Like, it's not a date. Doesn't matter. He loves every moment that he can spend with her. But shouldn't he be starting their food? Right now, yes. she's she's she ordered be the burgers. Their food. <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> but it'll pass. I'll I'll let that slide. So they're having a really good time, and then they look over, and Suki and Jackson are just being sweet and giggly, and they're chatting, and Lorelai starts talking about how nice it is, like new love, and Luke joins in on the romance in this moment too, where he's like, every joke is funny, and this is the first kind of like romantic side soft side really that we've seen of him out loud like we've seen it in his body language and his gaze but we mm -hmm. haven't actually heard him express it they're having this chat about how i wish i would have that again and luke says like you will have that again and then he he goes for it you know maybe sometime we could uh... where are the girls what? <laughs> <gasps> Mrs. Kim, no! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the build, the build. You, you know what's coming. You know what's coming. There's no question about what he's about to do. And the anticipation cut off by Mrs. Kim. Ugh. And you see her coming too. Like they, they, they just show this quick glimpse of her out the window. And you know it's about to happen. And then it doesn't. <sighs> Horrible 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 so this moment where luke finally asks lorelei out we've been waiting 12 episodes for this <laughs> and mrs kim comes in like guns blazing mm -hmm. trying to find the girls and then moment ruined because mm -hmm. now it's like what do you mean the girls are at the movies like with a boy it's like well it's dean like it's rory's boyfriend and that's fine and mrs kim is like this is not fine i need to find the girls right now i've been calling i'm going to find the girls and obviously the moment is over because lorelei is like oh should be there for that <laughs> we need to go to the movie theater now and be part of this situation because i just found out that rory lied to me and to mrs kim so moms are on the loose. <laughs> That's like a really good time. <laughs> Luke so, is visibly dejected. Like they they really went for that expression. He like his whole body just deflates. <laughs> Not literally. Yeah. Because he's been wow. holding this back for so long. He's been wanting to do it. And the perfect moment. The perfect moment. And she was into it too. She like like her body moved up towards him and she was looking him in the eyes. Like it was, she was here for this question and he would have recognized that and sucks. Ah, such good screenwriting. <laughs> We're so invested. Well done team. So the scene that we get is the kids coming out of the movie and we get taught. He's so pumped. He's having, like, the time of his life, and Lane is not. <laughs> Lane is like, okay, we're going to wrap it up here. <laughs> Todd's words upon exiting the, the, the wherever they are, I, he says something. And I was like, what the hell did he just say? So I had to put the subtitles on, and he says, flaked flick. <laughs> what? Fl flaked. Flaked flick? I've never heard flaked before, flaked. Um, but huh. yeah. Flaked, flaked flick. <laughs> and I, I just love that he's wicked. It could be. Wicked okay, flick would be fine. But the <laughs> captioning is like <laughs> flaked. Editing Jenny here with some follow up. After further discussion, careful attention, and some input from Steve, our sound man, it was determined Todd actually says good flick, good flick. But some dodgy editing cut off the first good. And so we get. Flick, good flick. And he is not pulling a Shakespeare and making flaked a thing. The film, by the way, was Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. <laughs> just, <laughs> the choices at this place are fantastic. And I just I love mean, it's Lorelei. Yeah. Yeah! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Rune should have been there. Oh, man. Rune wrote the movie, <laughs> but in the future and sent it back. <laughs> Rune is a time traveler. I love how Todd like comes to life here. He's yeah. just he's so endearing by this point that like he's clearly not a bad guy. No. He's just not the right guy. So like even Mrs. Kim, Mrs. Kim would obviously not like him. <laughs> obviously not like him. Never, but ever. not because he's dangerous and horrible and a you know terrible man. He's just him. He's just not a <laughs> Korean doctor who goes to church. That's it. <laughs> oh, man. Also, I am now convinced that Rune is a time traveler because he's got like the hat and he's very short. Everybody was short back then. So obviously somebody looking up at Lorelai would be like, whoa, who is this tall woman? Because everybody in 1903 was tiny. And then <laughs> I think he just like bounces around all the time and he wrote this movie. That's 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 the ongoing theory now. Yeah, it's canon. So Lane wants to end the date. She's like, I'm just going to go home. And Todd is like, no, man. Like, let's go for ice creams and, like, eat them really fast and get that freezy brain thing. <laughs> he just <laughs> – he's really come out of his shell. Yeah. I love so it. I would, I'd go on a date with him. That would be a blast. I'd have yeah. such a good time. He just seems so um, nice. <laughs> I could not – take him seriously at all every time he said anything i would like laugh through my nose i would just be like snorting <laughs> the whole time <laughs> I just didn't do it <laughs> you're a lot nicer than i am as a whole <laughs> just, especially in those days i had like no standards because i had no experience so i would have gone for anything it would have been an, it would have been incredible this guy kind of enjoyed his time out with me wow let's go get freezy brains yeah. Yeah. So they're talking about this, and then all you hear is Lane Kim. And you're like, uh oh. Everybody turns. Lane goes, My mom. Or he goes, My mom. And Todd goes, Two moms. Well, that can't be good. <laughs> Bless him. I love him. <laughs> he's so ridiculous. Oh, he's such a good contrast to Rune. Like, they're both equally ridiculous, but in, like, polar opposite directions. Exactly, you have, like, yeah. like, gold retriever vibes, and then you have, I don't even know what, like, a rude, mean dog is, but it's that. Todd's final words on the matter are, that's Rory's mom? She's a babe, man. <laughs> yes! Yes! She sure is, and, like, she you sure know is. that all the teenage boys would be picking up on that. Mm -hmm. You tell it, Todd. You say it like yeah. it is. And yeah. And so we have <laughs> Dean being like, okay, I'll call you tonight, Rory. And Laura is like, mm-mm. <laughs> I don't think so. Mm -mm. Dean's like, uh, okay, okay, I'll I'll call you tomorrow. Yeah, okay, that's better. I love Lorelai's approach to parenting so much. Like mm -hmm. she doesn't beat around the bush, but she's not vicious and or insane like she's not mrs kim but she's just like still laying down the wall like eh, 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 eh. do not think so yeah and i adore that about her so much and mm -hmm. that is also how i talk to my children <laughs> so, they're toddlers so it doesn't always land <laughs> but it will one day it will continue this will be consistent and yeah well and i i i like that her interaction here with dean is an understandable and logical follow-up to her last interaction with Dean, which was mm. at the window, I believe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, fair. Look, I like that you're taking my daughter out. This is fine, but you respect my rules and the, what I say. So, okay, yep, yep, that's for sure. Rory and Lorelai are having this very frank, open conversation. Lorelai's not angry. She's just like, what? What is this? Like, she's confused. Mm -hmm. She's perplexed. She's disappointed it almost feels like too far like she's not like i'm not mad i'm just disappointed like it's not that mm. but it's like this is not how it's gonna go this is not right but like it's a very like democratic kind of back to the way that we believe that they usually communicate where it's like what were you thinking why did this happen like what were the reasons i need to understand what happened don't do it again like mm. very open and frank conversation yeah i like her line here um this whole trust thing only works if it goes both ways kid 
uh, that they're they're working on this trust thing between them. This is what they're trying to develop as as they're both both grown ups now, essentially. So yeah, I I like I like that they're they're aware of of what they're working on, and that yeah, it needs to be a democracy. Remember this. Remember. <laughs> Remember how it works yeah. with us? Florelai could have easily been like, we just had something. Like, there was just a big problem with, like, you staying out all night and, like, my trust was broken there, even though it was in an accident. Like, she could have really been like, are we back here? Like, she yeah. could have taken it in a different direction. But to her, it wasn't, like, a huge deal because ultimately they did go to the movies. They weren't doing anything crazy. It was just she was trying to help Lane go on a date with a boy. So for her, the, like, stakes are pretty low but she was also mm. like we don't let's not go down this road like <laughs> let's mm -hmm. just be open with one another and she tells her well like if i would have told you you would have had to tell mrs kim and she's like wait so you lied to me so i wouldn't have to lie to mrs kim and she's like yeah and she's like you are my kid like this is <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. well yeah. i like the so lorelei lorelei's method of problem solving and not just problem solving but sort of but really crisis solving remains the same that whether it's to do with um Suki's crisis in this or if it's the Rory's issue thing right now it's to focus on how are we going to move forth from this what are we going to do in future how are we going to continue on so it's not so much about oh we've done this before and let's rehash old things so she is always about moving on to the next moving forward how do we make this better what do we need to arm ourselves with to continue on? And that's what she's doing right here. And she is now, I think they are establishing the rules that they were talking about last episode of like the, the rules of how they exist, the rules of, you know, Lorelai's dating life, et cetera, et cetera. But they are, they're, they have family rules that they are now reforming. And part of that is respecting another family's rules. Because obviously there's another mother-daughter team there that they have a totally different system to us. And we have to respect that. And that yeah. is another one of our rules that we're building. Mm. Yeah, for sure. So I do have this clip from the end of this scene. Because that was also my takeaway from the whole evening. You know the one good thing we all learned from this? What? That I'm a babe. <laughs> <laughs> and that is what I would say. I would do that. <laughs> we're like, well, I'm glad that she she picked up on it because I wasn't sure if they were just gonna let that be like a throwaway line for the audience or if they were gonna have it so the other characters would hear. So <laughs> I'm glad that they did. I have done that actually in the past. Like, so my husband is not a jealous man at all. Like, there's a ton of trust, and he's not. He's just not that kind of guy. And whenever we've gone out to a party or something, and somebody shows an interest in me. Later on, I'll I'll go to Steve and be like, ooh, he thought I was cute and he liked me. <laughs> <laughs> I related so strongly to this scene. <laughs> and Steve was just like, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh. <laughs> so we find out that Lane is perpetually grounded, mm -hmm. which is what about what expected, considering that when she gave her mom perfume, she had to go to Bible camp. So this is next level. Rory climbs up the side of the house and is at Lane's window. And they're talking. She's been talking. learning from Dean, I think. <laughs> and they're talking about how, you know, Todd was not the one for her. And she goes, Todd is not the one for anybody who could read, write, or function at a basic human level. <laughs> <laughs> kind of harsh. That's a bit mean. It but is I, a I bit mean, it. but... I see where she's coming from. I see where she's coming from. I I like I like the choice that they made that he liked her. Yeah, that, I really you know, they, liked they could have just too. had it that he wasn't interested, but no, he actually he called her. He liked her. That's so cute. <laughs> and he called her after the blowout on the street too. Imagine yeah. liking somebody that much and not being so afraid of his like her mom. I don't think he yeah. has the like I don't think he has the capacity to be afraid. No. No. <laughs> He's probably no, just but like I what? She has a mom. That's okay. Everyone has moms. <laughs> well, and, and I like that they, they decided to go against the trope of, like, you have a, a not-so-good date, and then the guy doesn't even call. It would have been fully expected, but no, he did call her. That's really, yeah. really sweet. I don't know how much I uh, approve of how she handled the call by pretending to be her mother. <laughs> 
just like speaking in Korean and like yelling and hanging up the phone. I would have loved to have seen that. I really wish they had included that. that. Just her panicking. Yeah. Like, although if she was that grounded, you know that she was not even allowed to answer the phone. Mm-hmm. Like, because it's you know two thousand. There's a communal phone. There's like a landline. Oh, know, it's in a landline. Oh, or yeah. you have. So the fact that the phone rings and Lane is anywhere near it is impossible. There's no yeah. way. <laughs> so while Rory is upstairs, Lorelai is like on her way to the Kim house at the same time to talk to Mrs. Kim about Lane being grounded. There's this exchange because there's a man downstairs who broke like a lamp or something and this this whole you break you buy thing, which was a lot. Upon second viewing, I think that that's meant to be symbolic, a metaphor for how Mrs. Kim feels about Lane. It seemed to be kind of out of place and unnecessary at the start, but this is how I'm thinking of it. Because of, well, she's she's at her most severe, right, in this, in this moment. I think she feels the most, like, her family, herself and her daughter, are most vulnerable right now. And they're at their, their weakest spot. And I think she's afraid of Lane's safety. Of course she is. She says so, says as much later on. But I, I think this or the overreaction of the you break it, you buy it and how severe she is. I think that's coming from how she feels about Lane of like, you harm my daughter, my daughter who is like pristine. She needs to be kept in this safety net, safety zone and protected at all costs. You do anything to harm her or, you know, steer her clear of the path. Like you're paying for it in some kind mm-hmm. of a way that that's that's my take. No. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Mm. I can see that. And at the very least, the overreaction is because she's just like overwrought with emotion. Oh, yeah. And in comes Lorelai behind this exchange. And Lorelai wants to make sure that it's still okay for Lane to come over to their house. Like she wants to make sure that Mrs. Kim knows that this was a one-off thing that it's not gonna happen again if lane says she's gonna be at their house she will and she wants to make sure that they could still have like the friendship that they were able to have before and mrs kim is just like not having any of it she's like well lane's grounded what are you talking about (laughs) she's like well she's not gonna be grounded forever right Mm. lorelei tries to reason with her I'm being like, well, teenagers are teenagers. They slip up. They want to date boys. Like they, you know, you got to give them a little bit of space to do the things they want to do. Otherwise they will be sneaking around and they will be doing stuff. I'm getting tired of Lorelai always talking about her teenage pregnancy because teenagers being teenagers is like a universal thing, regardless of whether you had a baby from it or not. (laughs) Teenagers will always want to do what they want to do. And that actually, I feel like, cheapened her argument or her points with Mrs. Kim because she's like, well, I I was smothered and I had Rory. She's like, well, I don't, like, she, you got pregnant. That's not your parents' fault. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, well, that's like the extreme version of it. But kids who get smothered yeah. will still go and disobey more than kids who are given the license to experiment and explore who they are. And yeah, I feel like she missed the mark on that but she's laurel eyed so she has to talk about how she was a teen mother every day otherwise people might forget <laughs> it's it's an attempt it's an attempt and i she just has no other example to show i suppose but um but yeah it i, I don't think it quite worked to quite worked for what she was aiming for well and mrs kim just like wasn't conceding at all she's like i don't care about other kids i care about my kid it's like well your kid's it is still like part of a greater group. Like she's a demographic regardless. And she's just not open to having the conversation with Lorelai at all. I don't know how I feel about, like I do think it's a little bit overstepping, but I also understand that it would have been really hard to not overstep given the severity of the reaction. Because like when your kids are so close and you see something happening that is an injustice, (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'd have a hard time- Lorelai knows how much the Gilmore house is a safe space and a refuge for, for Lane. He knows yeah. that. So they they both come to an understanding, which is just like a universal parent statement, right? Really, where Mrs. Kim is like, I just want Lane to be safe. 
Mm-hmm. And Lorelai's like, I just want Rory to be safe. Like we're all trying to just keep our kids safe. And that's mm-hmm. always the number one goal. And mm-hmm. we all have that in common, mm-hmm. no matter what. So I do find that that softens Mrs. Kim a little bit. Shortly after that, we find out that Lane's allowed to go outside. She's allowed to go yeah. as far as the sign. <laughs> and like, you know that she does respect her mother so much. And she's so afraid of her mother that she like gets close to the sign. And then is like, oops, nope, too close. Okay, got to back up. Mm-hmm. Just going back to Lorelai for just a quick second, she does try to sort of put it in perspective and not perspective, but she does try to, aside from her own personal example, she she puts it instead, I just think if I'd had more space or someone to listen to me, then, mm. you know, this might, this might not have happened. Things would have been... So I'm hoping that those words are the ones that actually settled on Mrs. Kim, that it's some space and someone to listen. I don't think Mrs. Kim feels like she can listen to her, but all Mrs. Kim knows is probably the way she was brought up. And she doesn't know of, of mothers being the ones who listen and are caring and comforting. So she, she needs Lane to be experiencing the same thing that she is because that's all she knows. That's all she knows. And that's the only way that she sees mother daughter things going forward. I, I genuinely don't know. Obviously I've never seen the show. I don't know what happens, um, but I cannot see her budging much. And I'm very intrigued as to what the near future is for Mrs. Kim and Lane. I have no idea. We quickly have this little scene at the end where Lorelai and Rory are back at Luke's, for, I think, for the first time since she had to leave. It's There's a little bit of awkwardness. It's not Suki Jackson awkward. But they, you know, they're they're a little bit off. Like Luke has to ask Lorelai if she wants coffee. And she's like, but do you have to ask? Like they both are waiting. They both have that little thing unsaid that had started being said and then didn't get any resolution, right? Mm-hmm. So she goes in with Rory. Her pager goes off. And that's when we find out that Lane's been let outside. And Ray's like, I have to take this outside because Luke doesn't like cell phones. And... She says she doesn't want to incur the wrath of Luke. Laura Lorelai <laughs> goes, why not? It's fun. <laughs> Which I love. So we have Lorelai now on her own. Luke approaches the table. They have their exchange about Do you want coffee, you know, whatever. And Lorelai looks so she has so much anticipation in her face. Like, mm-hmm. are you gonna say it? But instead of being like Suki and just waiting, she brings it up. And I love her for this. You know, I had a good time the other night. The cards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Me too. Good. Yeah. In fact, you rushed out of here before I had a chance to, um... A chance to... Kick your ass in poker. (laughs) You wish. (laughs) Burger? Two and fries. Maybe we could do it again sometime. Oh, yeah. Well, I I would like that. <sighs> uh, Luke. Luke. She was there. She was waiting. She brought it up. Read mm-hmm. the room, dude. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. frustrating. I, I really wonder what made him lose his nerve this time. Because he was, he was so going with the flow the other, the previous night, you know, the time before, and he was there. And then it's so visibly, he's just, he's just not there. He's, he's, he's not in the, like, his body language is different. His breathing yeah. is different. Everything. Like, what happened? Well, the vibe uh, is different. There's don't, they don't have the cute date in the corner. The romance isn't in the room. Like, they haven't been talking about Lorelai yeah. being a catch. Like, <laughs> and so I think it just, like, freaked him out because it's back to kind of normalcy. And he yeah. does sort of ask ish like we should do it again but it's not official it's not like we should go on a date it's like i'd like to spend more time with you again in a manner sometime Mm -hmm. (laughs) luke (laughs) and i think that's pretty much where the episode wraps up Mm -hmm. they (laughs) seem like end game (laughs) but it's feels too early 
um, for an endgame pair to get together. So I'm not getting my hopes up for any romance too soon, but I'm thoroughly enjoying this as a slow burn fan myself. Yeah, I also love the slow burn. It's really, really fun. But I get frustrated when the slow burn takes too long. Like, <laughs> I'm good for a bit, and then I get impatient. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because that's who I am. <laughs> I mean, I had a one-sided crush on a dude for three years. Three years, so I'm good with a slow burn. <laughs> I have patience. <laughs> I Yikes. don't. I do not. <laughs> I asked my husband out the first day I saw him. I hadn't spoken to him yet. Sorry, I didn't ask him out, but I gave him my number before we had even talked. And then uh, about like a month later, I asked him out. And then I even moved up our date by like several days. <laughs> like, I don't want to wait. Waiting? No, I don't. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not subtle. And we love you for it. And I appreciate you for it. You are my Lorelei <laughs> to my Suki. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> I will go on any double date you want as long as they know I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> and as long as everyone's on board and is aware. <laughs> I will be your wingman. Fun. <laughs> Sounds yeah, great. I, I think it'll be fun. All right. I think that's mm, us. That's us. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much for joining us and tuning in week after week. We were getting some nice followers and comments. Yeah, and hey everybody. We really, really appreciate how it's coming out to you. And we love to know that you're enjoying the show. It's very encouraging. So she's been Lisa. I've been Jenny. We have been the Belladonna Watch Club. And we'll see you next week. And subscribe if you want to. Please That's do. That's right. <laughs> Yay. Bye. Yeah. Flick it, flick.